Welcome to the Movement Code Podcast, where we help you decode movement, health, and lifestyle so that you can expand and grow. Hey guys, my name is Antonio Gurley, your host for the Movement Code Podcast. I am a father, husband, business owner, rehab practitioner, and coach. Information overload has paralyzed many of us, and we are overwhelmed with good intentions and don't know what or who to trust. We aim to provide you clarity and confidence by bringing you expert advice for the everyday person. Thanks for spending some time with me today and enjoy the episode. What's happening, everybody? This is Antonio, your host of the Movement Code Podcast. And today we have episode 12 coming at you. This is going to be another solo episode. It's just going to be me. Um, I'm actually really enjoying these because it gives me a chance to kind of just talk off the cuff about some of the things that I enjoy talking about. A lot of this is going to be answers to questions that I've been asked specifically by either patients in the office or clients that I'm training online. And some of it's just going to be deeper thoughts again about some of the things that I'm exploring in and of myself, some of the things that I'm working through in and of myself, which you're here today in the uh, the episode, uh, putting the cart before the horse. So I'm hoping you guys are enjoying these. If you if you are enjoying these and you have specific questions you want answered, hit me up. Shoot me an email. Shoot me a DM. Uh, give me a text message. You can email, of course. So I want to be able to provide as much value for um, you as a listener so that you can get, you know, potentially a direct question answered. If you're not seeing me, if you are seeing me and, you know, ask me in the office or hit me a message on, uh, while we're training and I'll be able to, uh, reapply that as well. Now coming back off of last week, right? Coming back off of last week, we had, uh, sorry, the last interview was with Dr. Ginger Wolf, just encouraging you guys to to just live that better life and diving in a little bit deeper into your health and wellness. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode and you're maybe uh, digging in a little bit deeper about some of the symptoms that you might have been having and looking further into what some uh, what some interventions might be. Now before we get into the episode today, as always, I want to encourage you guys right off the bat, make sure you're subscribing um, so that you're getting these feeds. Um, pushed you live once they once once they go live or once they get published. Um, we appreciate that if you're sharing it with a friend or a loved one, sharing the message, sharing the love. We cannot thank you um, how wonderful that is for us, knowing that you guys enjoy the content, enjoy the message, and you know, share it with someone else that they might find useful and beneficial. Uh, and last but not least, is uh, just giving us a review. If you have a couple moments. Uh, and you enjoy the show, just whatever you're popular, whatever you're downloading this from and listening to, hop on, just give us a quick review and give us some feedback because that is super beneficial for us to be able to uh, continue to make that content uh, relevant for you. Last thing I'm going to add here is it seems like although gyms, at least in the great state of Colorado, are starting to open up, there's a lot of you that are still hesitant of going back to the gyms. And, and you know, rightfully so. This is, this is just crazy times. We still don't know how everything's panning and laying out. But a lot of us are feeling unsupported in the fact that we feel like our fitness, our health, and our nutrition are going to the wayside. That does not have to be the case. Uh, something is better than nothing. Right, a lot of us. Right when this happened, we went from our normal scheduled routine to everything being flipped 180 degrees. And some of us were still feeling those lingering after effects of not being able to get into the routine that we'd want to be able to do, feeling lost, feeling not supported, whatever that might be. So uh, we want to uh, just extend that offer and let you guys know there are resources out there, whether that is with us or other providers. There's a ton of online content out there for supporting you through your fitness, your health, and your nutrition. If you, if you, uh, if if you want to be able to work with us individually, we do have a couple spots that we've opened up just through the transition of all of this. Um, you know, we've, we've lost some clients, we've gained some clients, but we do have a couple spots open. So if you guys are listening to this right now and you want to, and you want to jump on board with us, uh, reach out to me and we'll, we'll get you guys uh, all squared away. So episode 12, putting the cart before the horse. Enjoy. All right, guys. Welcome back to Movement Co. Podcast. Today for the Movement Co. Podcast, it's going to be just, a, again, a solo segment with myself. And we're just going to be talking through some of the thoughts and 
some of the thoughts and considerations we need to have when we're addressing um, health, fitness, and some of the changes that we're hoping to make in our lifestyle, okay? And again, part of this, as you, uh, as you heard in the intro for the podcast, is we want to try to help you decode so we can navigate all the, all the data, all the information out there right now that's related towards health, fitness, and lifestyle. And it gets overwhelming. I myself am shiny object type of person. I read something new. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. I need to start implementing it, right? And then I just try to throw it into whatever I'm doing, forgetting that I haven't completed maybe the current plan or program that I was on, or I'm, I'm, I'm trying to change too many variables at once and I don't know exactly what the actual change is providing me. And this is common. We, we do it a lot. So it's not that it's not that this is wrong because it's it's good to be motivated and it's and it's great to want to keep expanding and trying new things. But as I as I as I just described, so many of us are guilty of putting the cart before the horse. And this was sparked by a conversation I had with one of my current clients that was uh, about a program that we're going to be starting. We're gonna, that we're going to be going through some um, uh, some training, some programming for them, and we we're talking about our goals and. Like many of us, we want to get stronger, we want to look better naked, whatever that is, right? Um, but there's a body composition goal for many of us. And we were talking about body composition, what, what's the timeline we're hoping for, right? And this, I, I should back up, this goal for body composition was less about body composition and honestly more about weight loss, which is fine. Weight loss is good, but we, but we had to ask the questions why, right? You get into you get into why. Well, why do you want to lose weight? Okay. Well, I want this and this. Well, why is that important? I, I feel better about myself when I'm when I when I weigh less. Great. Why do you feel better about yourself? Oh, I can do more. I don't feel as exhausted. I have more energy. Okay. Well, why is that important for you? Well, I'm busy. I got multiple businesses. I got family. We, you know, whatever that is. We start diving in, and it's okay to just want to look better. I want to be lean, I want a six pack, whatever that is. But noticing it didn't come down to just the pure aesthetics, right? There's, a, there's, there's always a deeper rooted reason why. And one of the things that we came back to was I've always been lighter, okay? Well, now we're starting looking at age and a lot of different factors, right? Well, we're now over 30. So the diet and the weight that you've been able to sustain as a high schooler it's not the same now. Metabolism changing, your stress levels are changing, your sleep patterns might be changing, right? There's a lot of factors that go into what we're trying to achieve for our goals, right? And this is the same for just strength, right? Let's, let's, let's flip the coin and say, well, I want to be stronger. When I was younger, in high school, I was stronger, but I was lifting four to five times a week, right? And now maybe we're lifting only two to three times a week but yet we're dealing with joint issues or maybe some aches and pains that we didn't have before, right? So all of these will change what we're trying to implement now. So while, while we're still trying to focus on the outcome measurements that we have, we got to understand that the horse pulls the cart. This is the driving force. We want this goal, whatever's being carried by the cart, we want that, but we're forgetting the vehicle and how it gets there, right? So coming back to this, uh, individual in this story is we started then diving into and they had a very clear representation of kind of the body image that they wanted okay which is again nothing wrong with that totally fine we can want that and they shared with me who this individual was they were kind of emulating and then uh, opening up the, the, that person's profile and diving more into it you see this individual is very fit, aesthetically looks great, and trying to then map the goal, what they want with where they're at, we had to have tough conversations, right? The timeline in which they wanted, unrealistic, right? For someone that maybe is just getting into fitness, just now starting to make some decisions about their nutrition, even if it is at a later end, and they wanted to be at a certain point looking a certain way, not understanding that a lot of these individuals in which you see online, in which you see marketed and advertised for specific programs, they've taken years to get there, and they've made sacrifices to get there. And we need to, we need to take that in consideration, right? Because we want something, but we're forgetting the effort 
that has to be taken to get there. And part of the reason why I'm sharing this is not because of this one story, but because it resonated so much with where I'm at and what I struggle with myself, right? We get into these, I get into these phases and I'm like, oh man, that would be great. I would love this or I'd love to be able to do this. I should be able to do this. I feel like I'm at a point where that's achievable, which is great because one of the things if you've ever read or listened to the audiobook Think and Grow Rich, if you have a goal or if you've kind of had this thought like, oh, it would be great or I feel like I would be able to do this, the fact that you're thinking about it means it is within your capability to do so, right? And that you should be able to achieve it. You just have to line them up and figure out the plan and understand that the plan sometimes takes time. There's a, there's a time factor, there's a sweat equity factor in there. And I struggle with that. Not only in health, not only in fitness, but also in my lifestyle. What I think I'm able to achieve, and most of us try to do too much in any one given day, as Tony Robbins said, we forget what, we, we oftentimes overestimate what we can do in a day, but underestimate what we can do in a year. Right, we try to fit it all in now, putting the car before the horse, understanding that we're going to load it up, we're going to create the systems, we're going to try to create some of the routines or habits to allow us to get to point B, to get to our goal, to put in the sweat equity with the plan that we've created. And sometimes the timeline doesn't line up with where we are. But again, as Dan John says, the goal is the goal. We got to keep our eyes on the goal. And I myself am, uh, 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 I struggle and I'm guilty of that because I'll see something new and I'll, and I'll transition too much. So I didn't complete it. I didn't complete the program or the task in which I didn't create maybe a sustainable habit. But that's what this is all about. You're doing this constant audit process of understanding what works with you. Maybe you quit that program or goal because you knew it wasn't aligning with, or sorry, that program because it wasn't aligning with the goal that you had previously. or Goals change, we transition, right? What was once important, maybe it's not as important now, right? So body composition stuff, while we all wanna look good, <laughs> this is what I was running into this year, man, I wanna lean out, this is summertime, you know, maybe I have the ability to do so, I know what needs to be done, and most of us know what needs to be done, it's the matter of doing it, right? And also then coming to terms with, asking again, why, why? Why? Why do we want those goals? Is it just to look a certain way? Again, not wrong, but why do you want to look a certain way? And for me, I just wanted to lean out, right? Going through a transition time of younger kids and family and the holidays and all of that. And, you know, it was just, it was just desserts and joys, you know, be merry, be happy. Loved it. It was great. Okay, cool. New chapter, new page. This year, although, like with many of us, just a wrench in the cogwheel, February, March, COVID hit lifestyle change, we're locked in, we're changing, we're not active as maybe we were before, and everything changed for everybody. Now, we're kind of back into somewhat of a routine, but we're still seeing things change because you can't completely go back to gyms. You're not able to do the things maybe you were before, so we, now we need to be a little bit more resourceful about the resources that we have. You can still accomplish all those things, you just have to tighten things up a little bit more. So jumping back, with this individual, we started having then the conversation of, well, okay, well, what's our training? What's our training history and background? Come to find out, only been training him for three to six months. So having again those difficult conversations of understanding, you want to be able, you want to be here, but we're here, and understanding that this person that you're emulating or these goals that you have, those take years to accomplish, right? And those are the tough things that you need to have with your coaches, your trainers, right? And they should be asking you those things. It's good to have great goals. It's great, it's, it's great to push yourself and to strive for bigger things, but understand that there are time constraints, not only in the daily life, but there's time constraints in which how fast something can happen, right? Physiologically, our body can only adapt so fast. Right? Physiologically, you can only lose so much weight so fast. 
physiologically, you can only put on so much muscle so fast. And if you want to be able to do those things, you got to make sure that things are dialed in in order for you to be able to accomplish that. So then you put in, then you, then you match in the lifestyle, right? Okay, well, what's your diet like? It's good. We eat generally mostly paleo, whole foods, lean meats, you know, whatever that is. But I like, but, but I like my glass of wine. I like my little bit of sweets. Okay, well, if you want this, what are you willing to sacrifice? If you want to be here, if you want to make X income, if you want to be able to do certain things, if you want to be able to travel so much, what are you willing to sacrifice in order to achieve those things? It's a give and take. It's a give and take. Rob and Peter to pay Paul. You got you to take from this to give to this. And it kind of, it can bounce back and forth. So then you set up your non-negotiables. We all got non-negotiables. What, what, in your lifestyle, what in your day, what in your, what in your business, what in your family, what in your relationships, what in your spirituality, what are your non-negotiables? What are you not willing to give up in order to still pursue these other goals, right? So right now, the way that we're trying to structure our life for non-negotiables is family time, is kid time, is imprinting on them is loving on them is spending time as much as we can as a family in these precious moments when these kids are so small right we want that time and we're going to always want that time with them as much as we can because we know fam life is life is so valuable life can be so short and the relationships you have whether that be family and friends are super vital and important from not only a physiological like touch and loving but from a chemistry level of having that love and touch from a mental standpoint thus everyone going through this covid state right now the amount of depression stress and anxiety that's up right now as a result of this of having less social interaction is really hitting people hard so making sure you have those touch points making sure you have those touch points and that's really important for us so those are non-negotiables for us we want that family time we need to make sure that we're going to sacrifice honestly a little bit of maybe the business development and the things that we need to do for our business and to be able to have more of that time to go on the family walk we're going on a family walk every night that's non-negotiable it's just what we do that's our time to decompress that's our time to reconnect that's our time to get the kids outside that is a non-negotiable for us so jumping back diet wise what's the non-negotiable no one cares if you have your glass of wine no one cares if you have that little bit of sweet but you need to come to terms and understand that if you want this but you still want to keep on to this that timeline is going to be a lot slower and or that trajectory not even, might not even be there. Looking at what these people are doing and understanding the sacrifices that they made day in and day out for not just a day, but months on to a year, that changes things. That changes things. So then you come to grips with, okay, well, I want this. And it's not, I'm not saying settle, but just coming down to terms with, okay, well, why did I really want this? I'm healthier, I'm stronger, I look better, I feel better. Okay, is there something in the middle in which you achieve all those same things that allows you to keep what you have going on here? It's a give and take. Life's a give and take, and we're just trying to figure out what works best for you. Now, spinning that off, when we're talking about fitness, exercise, and rehab, it's the same thing. How much time do you actually have to put towards to put towards your fitness, to put towards your health, to put towards training every day, right? Because you have to give up or you have to reduce something in order to carve out time for you, right? And or in, condition, in, in combination with is what are you out of your day, right? What are you wasting time on that you can make sure that you're streamlining and being more efficient so you have more time for the things that we want? And saying that and asking that question, most of us, the majority of us know automatically like, I can cut this, I can cut this, I can cut this, I can cut that. To carve out more time for the non-negotiables, to carve out more time for the, the things that you want, to create the habits, to create the systems, to create the lifestyle that you want. So that's gonna set you up with a long-term plan, right? So what we, what I really focused on over the last five years and this is 
again, more so, we, we just started our business just over five years ago, and we're consistently growing, which is great, with the love and support of all of you, which has been fantastic. And for those of you who have not seen us personally, but you're listening to this podcast, you've supported another business somewhere else, so you're helping them. And I hope that if you have a small business, you have a following in which that's been helping you, right? So this is this is relationships. This is people helping people. It's a beautiful thing, as I was saying, my wife jokes at. But over the last five years, my health goals have, have transitioned. But the one thing that's remained consistent is consistency, in which I eat veggies, I eat meat, I drink water, I try to sleep as best as I can with kids and business, right? I go through different programs depending on phase of life, but my goal is to get in at least five to six days of training a week. Some days are more, some days are less. I'm moving every day, whether that's a 10 minute walk, whether that's playing with the kids and wrestling on the ground, whether that's just a simple bodyweight workout. But it's a, it's a model that's built on consistency that I expect to have payouts way down the road. I don't have any immediate goals right now as I'm saying this where I wanna be able to achieve certain, certain things. Last year, I wanted to be able to achieve two times bodyweight deadlift, right? Then I transitioned out of some heavy lifting, wanted to do more bodyweight. And then I had aspirations of doing 2.5 times body weight training and I set up a plan in the system to be able to achieve that and then certain things changed which you know as it does in life where I was not able to fulfill the program at that point in time now I'm in the position in which I'm okay with that a lot of you whether that would be if you're an athlete or something and you actually have to produce results that's a little different. So then you, again, you extend help to a coach, a trainer, someone who can help you get back on track. I will be able to achieve that 2.5 times body weight deadlift. It's just not this season of life for me. Three kids under five, two businesses, launching an online course with my wife and trying to, trying to, uh, trying to create another program and system specifically for individuals that have low back pain that's gonna be able to expand my reach to help more people throughout the world. So with all that said and done, the priorities of 2.5 times deadlift is not in the cards right now because with that, there are sacrifices. Sacrifices that lead me up to being able to uh, program it out to be able to make sure my mobility and my, my prehab, and I'm ready for this. And then more importantly is the recovery aspect. Understanding that fitness, working out and training if you want to go hard, you got to have that time to recover, right? And so all of those factors go into what you want to be able to do. So jumping back to our story, this individual having this goal here, it's not just diet. It's not just exercise. It's the lifestyle of her having her own business, of working, of going through COVID. It's also her lifestyle of the stress of just everyday life. It's also the lifestyle factors of who's your support system, right? What do you have in your partner to be able to help you out, right? There's, it's, it's multifactorial. And we have to look at all of those things in order to achieve the goal. Because if we're trying to go towards a goal and we don't hit it in the timeline that we want, we assume that the plan was wrong. That could be part of it. But we have to look at all of these elements and pieces, right? When we're talking about pain and recovering from pain, it's not just rehab. It's not just moving. It's not just mobility. It's not just stretching. We're looking at, we're asking questions What's going on at work right now? What's going on with your life? Are you stressed? Are you overly stressed? What's going on with your kids? Anything going on? How's, how's the health of your loved ones? Right? What's the relationship status at your work? Are you happy with where you are? Right? We forget that commonly all this comes into play. So we try to control what things we have control over. We cannot stress about things that are outside of control. COVID hit us. COVID hit us. Right? And many of us are many of us are being restricted by government state authorities as to what we can and cannot do for the for the general safety and public of our greater community, which is great. We want to be able to protect those that are at risk. We want to reduce exposure for those that are at risk. We want to be able to provide safe environments for those that still need to go out and get um, groceries or whatever that is. So that's changed things drastically, right? 
But what do you have control over? Right? And we always say this. You have control over what you put in your mouth, what you do, how you think, how you feel. Right? Taking those factors, setting up whatever works for you. It's different for everybody. Maybe it's a daily meditation where you check in on those things. Maybe it's a journal. Maybe it's a coach. Maybe it's a trainer where you can, where you can relay a lot of these things that are coming off of you. But understanding ultimately we're coming back towards we need to make sure we're not putting the cart before the horse. Right? It's great to have the goals and the aspirations, but understanding that there's got to be set, you got to set up a plan, and that plan, depending on what it is, you have to put in all those different factors and, and try to create that achievable timeline. And as you go down there, just like with most plans, right? A plan is we're aiming towards the target, right? We will be thrown off course at some point. As we said, like I was trying to go for the deadlift and certain things happen. If that's still the goal in the plan, we just have to reroute the system, right? If you got bumped off course, recalibrate your navigation system to make sure you're aiming back online. If you had a cheat weekend because you traveled to visit family and you wanted to be able to experience the best with them, recalibrate and get back online, okay? It's an ever, it's, it's a constant ongoing process of auditing, taking inventory of where you're at, taking inventory of how you feel, and again, controlling the variables in which you have control over. Okay, so your challenge for this week, again, we're trying to leave you guys with a challenge, is we, we're going to revisit the SWOT analysis we did, I believe it was episode um, three, I'll have to go back in, in, uh, in the notes and look at this, uh, the SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, revisit your SWOT analysis, whether on a daily or weekly basis, so that you can audit your day to make sure that you're efficient. And even though we're in the middle of the year, many of us started goals at the beginning of the year. My goals at the beginning of the year have drastically changed due to this whole COVID scenario. So I've readapted them. I've kind of transformed them. While some of them are similar and some of them still apply, I've had to, I've had to, I've had to reshape and restructure what those goals actually are. So whatever your goals were at the beginning of the year, go back through them, realign, make sure if your timelines, it might not be a goal for just 2020, it might be for a future or ongoing goal. Recalibre what those goals are and what needs to be done in order to align your habits or your process or the sweat equity of the horse pulling the cart that's gonna get you there. And then be honest with yourself. Do you need help? Will help get you there quicker? And that's something that I'm constantly in, in the mix with because we also want to be efficient yet also understand what was in, what's within our capabilities, right? Do you need to hire a coach? Do you need to hire a trainer? Do you need to hire a nutritionist? Do you need to hire a therapist? Right? All of these are valid and they don't make it any it doesn't change your credibility for getting the goals, right? Oftentimes we think like, oh, I needed help to get there. We all need help at some point. We're not gonna be able to do it on our own. I try to do too much on my own. We all try to do too much on our own. And that's why there's resources out there. So lean on those resources, invest in those resources, invest in yourself, invest in your goals, invest in your life. What do you want your story to be? Can you impact your story by reaching out for a little bit of help. Okay. So uh, again, thanks for joining the Movement Code Podcast. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. I would love to hear what some of your goals are, what some of the things you guys are struggling with. What cart are you trying to throw before the horse? Uh, if I can help in any way, just through a conversation, through email or social media platforms, through a DM or a message, um, I'm more than happy to just have those conversations with you guys. We want this to be a value for you. So hopefully something stuck with you. Hopefully something imprinted on you. Hopefully something uh, clicked in you that will allow you to make a positive change in the right direction to influence your story, okay? And as always, share this with a friend. If you know someone who's kind of uh, at, uh, at a crossroads or hit a speed bump or feel like they got derailed from their goals, uh, if you know of someone who's kind of constantly going through this process of changing goals or, oh, I'm going to do this now. We throw the car before the horse and then they trip and they feel like they're always getting set back and they're always changing things. Share this with them. See, I hope this will help. Um, again, what's 
none of us are alone in this. I'm someone who is constantly reaching out and it's, it feels like an overused term, but what do you want to call motivational speeches or that genre of things? Like I like listening to those. It kind of keeps me back online. There's a number of people that I enjoy, whether that be YouTube or podcast, where I'll listen to these things to make sure my thought process is going in the right direction. Cause it's super easy for us to spiral in a negative, in a, in a negative direction, right? Oh, this happened. Right, the moment we the moment we get tripped up or we hit a speed bump on our goals, we get derailed from it. And I'm I, this this was me to a T for many years, and I still struggle with this to the, to this day. I struggle to write the goals because I know if I get knocked off, I'm further away from it, or I get misdirected, and now it's a whole effort to get back online. I struggled with it, and I still do in order in terms of being able to formulate what I want out of my life and how do I achieve those things. Right? So it's an ongoing process, and that might be the reason why I'm constantly reaching out to those things. But again, it's a self-development process. I'm trying to better myself. I'm trying to develop better habits, better thoughts, better systems, so that I can live the life that I want. My story, my family story, and the imprint and the impact that I want to leave on this world, not only for my children, but for my, uh, for my, close, my, my community, how I can I make my community better, my clients and those that have reached out to me for services and help, how can I best serve them? It's an ongoing process. And it's not, it's not just in this, this service industry, right? We're all serving the greater good of this community, of this world and this population. So to be the best you, is a constant development process, is a constant growth process. To be the best, you will only help other people. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time. All right, thanks for tuning in for another episode of the Movement Code Podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Got a little bit deeper into what we need to really think about as we're evaluating our goals and our expectations when it comes to our health, fitness, and nutrition. It is all possible, though. One thing I want, to, want you guys to understand is if you have those goals and those aspirations, it is possible. So don't just assume that because we're putting that cart before the horse that we are out of alignment and not doing what needs to be done. It's just trying to make sure we're reframing the right mindset as to our expectations as to when those things can get done. So keep that in mind. Keep hustling. Keep grinding. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know and we will do the best that we can to support you and make sure that we're giving you everything that you guys need. Uh, one last thing, if you have not done so, please make sure to go to our website where you can get your free low back guide. Uh, it's just right there on the homepage. You just need to subscribe to the newsletter and you'll get our free, actually you'll get three free guides. Uh, we have the mobility, a shoulder, and a low back guide. So jump on those so you guys can be sure to get those. And we'll see you next week on the podcast. Take care, bye.